Good morning, and welcome to the channel. It is currently minus 16. I just got in from outside, cleared off the solar panels that had been covered for the last few days, so the battery bank is dead, so I pulled out the generator from the shed. But because it's so cold, we're gonna have to make some coffee. worth it. Okay. I guess I didn't give this update last time, and that is that the propane guy showed up. A different one. And showed up just in time because, as you saw, it's currently minus 16, and we did have water in the pipes here. But we're safe, nothing burst or anything too drastic. However, there's one thing that we have noticed the other day when I first got here, and that is there's some condensation buildup on the floor. I'll give you a closer look in a second, but I think how it's happened is when you construct a bottom plate, there's a gasket or a piece of vapor barrier that goes between the bottom plate, which is the two by four or two by six in this case, and the concrete slab to prevent any moisture from coming up. So, so they do have that gasket piece that's the width of the 2x4 to pre prevent any moisture from coming up and rotting the lumber. But there's one thing I'm not sure if they did do and that is caulk underneath the bottom side of the bottom plate. You're supposed to caulk it to um, bridge any gaps, any low points where a cold breeze from the outside could enter in. So I think that's one possibility that has happened. Another one is that the siding on the exterior of the building doesn't run past the edge of the concrete. I'll give you a look here. So that basically just means that the bottom plate is almost directly exposed to the outside temperatures, causing thermal bridging to go through that bottom plate into the inside of the building and form condensation when it hits the warm inside, which in this case is the floor. To give you a bit of a better look about what's happening, there's actually a good spot to show you right here on how that thermal bridging works. So you can see where this spacer is in contact with the bottom plate, as well as the warm floor. There's moisture that has formed because the cold is transferring from the outside through the material and hitting the warm floor and condensating. Whereas where there's a thermal break or at least a gap between the bottom plate and the warm part of the house, it's completely dry. Between both the foam and the caulking, I'm not quite sure which one will actually be able to fit where I need it to. I'm hoping the caulking, because obviously the foam will expand a bit and could cause a mess, but we'll see. Yeah, there's definitely moisture forming where that contact is happening, huh? There's actually quite a bit happening underneath the cabinet as well. With that much moisture, there's a potential that that cold transfer could come up the bottom plate, hit the drywall, and then if it condensates on the drywall, it could, it could mold which would be very unfortunate. So, huh. we'll try and correct where we can at the moment, but I do think that to do it properly may mean going outside and trying to figure out a solution out there. Oh boy. Pretty bad under the cabinets. I mean, that's all water back there you see pooling up. Okay, so I'm actually not gonna go ahead and try and fix that problem. We're gonna contact the builders who built the shell. I'm guessing they just forgot to do the step of adding caulking to the bottom and bringing the sheathing past down the concrete pad. So we're gonna contact them and see what they think. Hopefully they come back and fix it. 
um, or at least give some guidance as to the best way to fix it rather than spend all day caulking and foaming that quarter inch that I can from the inside and wasting that time. We'll just see what they think. I can still go ahead and continue on with the window trim and the door trim. So I'm gonna do that at least. So the only thing I have to keep in mind is for when I do these jams is the opening can't be more than 48 inches because that's the size of the track we'll be using. I guess I could cut it down, but we'll try and maximize the space. So I'll probably make the opening, well, probably 48 and a half, kind of the bare minimum of what I should go. And then I'll try and maintain the height of the door so it's a full 80 inches, I think. And uh, yeah, I'll cut all the jams at once and start installing them. I do want to double check to make sure those uh, jack studs, the vertical studs, are plumb. Just because you never know if it's a quarter inch out, it could cause issues to the overall opening. Whoa, pretty good. I'll go measure up the closet ones real quick. And those are the same. I can bulk cut all my jams. Got all my pieces cut, all three closet doors, and I can go ahead and installing them. I'm gonna actually assemble them on the floor first, stand them up, and then plumb the sides, just a little quicker. I'll just assemble it here, I think. And the frame's done. So I just have to stand this up. Almost thought I cut it wrong. I was so close. That would've been terrible. Stand up. Walk it over here. And it fits. So now I just have to shim the sides plumb. I started at the bottom because my stud is leaning a bit inwards at the top, so that way I can adjust it accordingly as I go up. Need one more thing though. I have to make sure as I go up, the jam is sitting a bit prior to the drywall, so my trim won't have an issue sitting flat, touching both the jam and the drywall.
that is done. Now I can jump in to the bedroom and do those other two. Um, should I show you guys? Do you want to see it? It's the exact same thing, so probably not. So that means that will do it for this episode. Next episode should be a little more exciting because I'll start the casing. But we'll see, maybe we'll get to it today. Probably not, I'll probably just take the day off a little early to regather myself from the condensation conundrum. So that will do it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in that one.